But that servant, falling down, besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's Gospel, Christ likens the kingdom of heaven to a king who desired to settle accounts with his servants. The entire parable refers to the very last sentence read, So also shall your heavenly Father do to you if you forgive not everyone his brother from your hearts. If the king of heaven and earth were to call us today or tomorrow to settle our accounts with us, do you think that he would look at you with a kind and loving smile on his face, or rather with a look of severe justice? The life you are leading, all the actions of each day, are they pleasing to him? We know that not one thought or word will escape his scrutiny. It is true also that our good deeds will appear in this accounting. The prayers we have said, the holy sacraments we have received, the alms we have given. But what are these few good works in comparison to our many and grave faults and sins? Maybe vanity distorted our best deeds and holiest actions. Then too, how much good could we have done and did not do? If you had lived but a few years, if time had betrayed you, there might be some kind of of an excuse for you before this severe judge. But one day would have been sufficient for your conversion. And after so many years of life, you did not convert sincerely. One year would have sufficed to make you a saint. And God gave you 10, 30, 50 years. A moment was sufficient for St. Peter with that one glance from our Lord. And he began to weep bitterly and was converted. One moment of grace did God give to the penitent thief in his dying hour. We suffer justly, the good thief openly confessed. Lord, remember me. Demas repented of his wicked life. A moment later, he died a saint. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. How many such moments has God given to you? Therefore, let me pose this question. How will the Supreme Judge look at you when you get the summons to appear before him immediately after death to settle accounts with him? A single mortal sin committed against God is enough of an offense to immediately warrant our eternal punishment in hell one single mortal sin. And it takes but a moment to commit a sin. But just as the servant in the parable knelt and begging moved his Lord to forgiveness, so too we ought to beg God and move him to pity to forgive our debts. With this, see how pleasing to God our humility, a humble confession of sin, and prayers for pardon. For this servant obtained pardon immediately by humbling himself. This signifies how great, how immense God's mercy and clemency are. When the king immediately forgave this vast debt of money to the servant who asked for it. In order to teach and encourage us to forgive the lesser offenses which our neighbors commit against us. Here is the scope of the parable according to Cornelius Alapide. Because God is essentially good and kind, therefore it is characteristic of his uncreated and infinite goodness and kindness to do good to all and to pardon and spare all, just as it is the property of fire to give heat and of the sun to give light. And so the church prays, O God, whose nature and property It is to have mercy and to forgive, etc. Every day when we pray the Our Father, we make reference to this merciful forgiveness 
we expect and ask of God, while at the same time promising to imitate him in forgiving, likewise, our neighbor. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Nothing weighs more heavenly upon us than unatoned sin. My sin is always before me, complained King David in the 50th Psalm. Our heart wants to unburden itself. Hence, Christ makes us pray to his Father, Forgive us. Number your sins, if you can. Begin with the pebbles of your childhood sins, down to the millstones of your most wicked sins. Even St. Augustine of Hippo recalled with astonishment his own youth. Still a boy, yet such a sinner, he said. But our Heavenly Father will forgive us if we forgive one another from our heart, as Christ assures us in the Gospel just read. Forgive as we forgive. This is the condition laid down by our Lord himself. He will forgive, provided we forgive. Lest we forget, he added these words to the very prayer he composed for us to pray with. And so every day, every time you utter this clause in the Our Father, remember God's great and bountiful mercy towards you, and your obligation to not imitate that heartless servant from today's gospel. That audacious servant, kneeling, bagged with tears for patience and mercy from his keen. Yet moments later he was unable to forgive his fellow servant, who owed him in turn a mere fraction, less than one percent of the debt to the keen. Beware, do not harden your hearts to others. Forgive them their offenses and trespasses against you, out of imitation and love of God. Go further, and ignore even whatever you find humanly annoying, as their natural defects, which are not sins in the least. What is a hundred pence compared to ten thousand talents of gold? Nothing. What we owe God for a single mortal sin is incomparably greater and graver than any offense from a fellow human. If we expect or demand, as in the Our Father, that God have pity and forgive us, how much the more are we obliged in turn to forgive our fellow men for whatever they have done against us, whether real or imagined? Forgive, and you shall find forgiveness. When praying the Our Father, then, Remember the import of that clause of forgiveness. The dispositions with which we should make this plea are two. First, repentance for our sins, and second, confidence in God's mercy. Bear also in mind that in order that this petition may be salutary for us, we must be ever ready to forgive others, and so should frequently approach the sacraments of penance and Holy Eucharist. Look one more time at St. Demas, who on his cross, suffering just punishment for the crimes he was guilty of, repented, and turning to our Lord, asked forgiveness. It is never too late, in the eyes of God, never too late while yet alive, to repent with a humble and sincere heart. That man, justly suffering capital punishment, repented and obtained forgiveness then and there in his last moments by God, who was also nailed to a, to a cross close by. It is never too late to repent, and even on your own deathbed, despair not to seek forgiveness, because Christ died with outstretched arms, arms nailed to be kept outstretched, arms outstretched to forgive us, if we hope to find forgiveness, even on our own deathbed, then we can hope sinners round the globe may also be forgiven in their last moments of life by our merciful Lord. Then, pray also for the conversion of sinners, even and especially those who have done you wrong. 
The final verse of the Gospel reads, So also shall my heavenly Father do to you, if you forgive not everyone his brother from your hearts. From your hearts, meaning from the very bottom of your heart. For there are many who forgive with their lips, but not with their hearts. Christ therefore bids that the gall of rancor be cast out from the depths of the heart, and that the honey of love be substituted in its place. I encourage you to make an examination of conscience every night, with gratitude that God is so willing to forgive, finalizing it with an act of contrition while gazing upon a crucifix. The parable today teaches how gravely displeasing it is to God to harbor in our minds anger, rancor, and revenge against a neighbor who has offended us. And on the other hand, how pleasing it is to God to lay them aside and convert them into love, even as God receives the penitent sinner to his grace and the bowels of his love and buries in oblivion all his past offenses as though they had never been committed upon sacramental absolution. Let God judge the neighbor. You must learn to forgive. Moreover, this is to be done not once, but seventy times seven, that is, always, and as often as your neighbor repents of the offense. To demonstrate this, Christ spoke the parable of the ten thousand talents, that is, of a very vast debt, which in today's money could amount even up to $13.2 billion. In conclusion, let us therefore, who are but men, and very weak men, imitate God, who every day forgives us our daily offenses against him, be they very many and very grievous, as often as we repent. And let us do the same from the heart, and, therefore, he teaches and encourages to pray daily, Forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.